Hi, I'm Scott Mansell and welcome to Driver 61's University Series. In today's tutorial we're going to be taking a look at understanding grip, where we're going to go into detail about what affects grip levels as you're driving around the circuit, how it actually feels to break grip when you're cornering, how to safely approach the edge of grip so there's no nasty surprises, how to ensure that your car slides progressively when you're cornering rather than snapping away from you and understanding the traction circle. So there are three things that affect the tyre's grip with the track itself. Firstly, it's the tyre compound, how soft or how grippy the actual rubber is of the tyre. Usually the more soft that the rubber is, the more it bites into the track surface and the more grip that the tyre will give you. The second thing is the track surface itself. Some types of asphalt will give you more grip than other types um, that the circuit may be made up from. The third thing that will affect the coefficient of friction is the actual event that was uh, at the circuit that you're at in the days before. For example, if there's been a Formula One race or another high performance uh, series at the circuit, they will have laid rubber actually onto the track. The, the rubber will have ripped off the car's tyres and put itself into the, into the circuit. Now when you go there in the days afterwards, this surface is actually really grippy, uh, grippier than the asphalt itself. So it will make you be able to, to get higher grip levels from your tyres. The final thing that affects the coefficient of friction is the weather and the track temperature. So obviously if it's raining you'll get less grip from the track surface itself, if it's dry you'll get more. And also to an extent the warmer that the circuit is the more grip it will give you. Now the second thing that affects a tyre's grip is the contact patch of the tyre. So the contact patch is the amount of tyre that is actually in contact with the track surface. Now obviously the higher or the bigger that this contact patch is the more grip that the tyre will have. The final thing that affects the tyre's grip is the vertical load going through the tyre itself. Basically the amount the tyre is being pushed into the track surface. So the higher the load or the higher the weight, the more grip that the tyre will give you. Now don't just think that you can go and add a load of weight into your car. Yes, you will put more load through the tyre but you'll have to brake, accelerate and turn all of that weight which will be a massive disadvantage. The second way you can improve uh, vertical load through the tyre is through aerodynamics. Now for example on Formula 1 they have lots of wings, a big diffuser and these are all designed to push the tyres into the track surface harder so that you get more grip from the tyre itself. And finally weight transfer. Now weight transfer is how the car's weight moves around the chassis. As you brake, the car will dive and more weight will go to the front of the car. Therefore, the front tyres will have more load going through them and give you more grip. Now, we're going to go over this in a future tutorial. Now, if you're new to track driving, the first time a car breaks grip or breaks traction can be a little bit scary. Uh, most likely, it won't be very progressive and the car will snap on you and it will be a little bit scary, to be honest. Now, having said that, the grip doesn't just fall off a cliff. Once the tyre starts to break traction, firstly you'll get a bit of warning, but once the tyre starts to break traction, there's a period that you have where you can control the car and the car will slide and be able to, to come back to having grip again. It won't just fall off a cliff and you won't just go spinning. So if you take a look at this diagram here, we have grip use on the y-axis versus distance across here. The red line is the braking grip that's being used, the longitudinal grip that's being used, and the green line is the lateral grip that's being used for turning. Now notice that the grip limit here across the top in the orange isn't just a line, it's actually a band, which means that you can brake traction here at the bottom of the line but the grip doesn't just disappear. Yes, it may tail off a little tiny bit, but you've got a band of where the car will be sliding but still be able to be under control. So you can see here, we get on the brakes and we 
begin to under rotate the wheel in this area here as in the tire is slipping a little bit against the track surface but we have an area where the the tire will happily stay there and it's the same with turning the the, the tire can slide but it won't just fall off the grip won't just disappear and that's very important to know when you're learning and you're approaching this edge of grip in your car now there are two ways that a tire can break traction firstly as i just mentioned longitudinally under acceleration and bracing braking and basically this is when the tires are wheel spinning or beginning to lock up the other way that the tires can slide or break traction is laterally and this is when the the tires are scrubbing across the circuit otherwise known as understeer or oversteer it's the sideways movement of the tire across the track now when you're on the circuit you may be driving around and not actually approaching the edge of grip and you may want to know how you build up to going around the corner quick enough so that you're just about to break traction and using all of the grip available from the tires now this is a very difficult thing to do um, it takes time it takes some experience you need to know the track well all of your racing lines and techniques need to be perfect but then you need to build up to the speed, the minimum speed or the optimal speed through that corner progressively and step by step. So in this diagram we can see a speed trace here. We have speed versus distance. Uh, just to explain this diagram very quickly, we're accelerating up to a corner here. Then this speed decreases as we're braking down to the, uh, the speed for the corner. At this point, the minimum speed of the corner, we're approaching the apex, then we're getting back on the accelerator and accelerating out the corner as we head on to the, the next straight. Now, when you're building up to the edge of grip, the, the best thing to do is to not take out massive chunks as you're coming into the corner. Now, what you want to do is as you feel that you're getting closer and closer to the edge of the grip, make sure that the, the incremental increase in speed is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So for example, the first lap, maybe our minimum speed through the corner is here. The second lap, we're going slightly quicker. Third lap, we're getting closer to the optimum speed. And the fourth lap, we're just on it. Now the reason for this is if you're going in five miles an hour quicker and then another five miles an hour quicker the next lap, you could possibly overshoot the optimal speed for that corner by five miles an hour, for example, at the apex. If you do this, it's quite likely that you'll run out of road as you're coming into the corner or maybe you'll, you'll have a spin. If you only overshoot by one mile an hour or two miles an hour, then you're not gonna run out of track. Yes, you may run a little bit wide, but you're not gonna have an accident. So really when you're building up to find the limit of grip, do it step by step by step by step. Take your time and then you're much less likely to have a spin. So as I mentioned before, when you first have a slide in a car, especially if you're a beginner, the slide might take you by surprise and it might actually be a really quick and quite nasty slide, to be honest. Now, the reason for this is because often beginners inputs into the car are quite hard, quite unrefined, and that makes the slide actually break away very, very quickly or make the tire break away very quickly. As always, our driving should be as smooth as possible. And when we make our inputs into the car really smooth, we load the tire up nice and gently. And when it breaks away, the slide will become very, very progressive. On the other hand, if you turn the car into the corner very hard or accelerate very hard, the tire is, is shot and it will slide, actually break away quite quickly. Just imagine trying to push somebody over. If you walk up to them and just push them hard, they will, they, will, they will fall over. Whereas if you gently load them up, it's likely that they won't fall over or they'll go very, very slowly. And it's the same thing when you're driving on track. So to be as quick on circuit as possible, we need to make sure that we're using 100% of the tires available grip at all times as we travel through the corner. Now this is more tricky than it may seem and a lot of drivers can actually use 100% of the tires grip under braking and 
and uh, um, turning at the apex, but combining this process from transitioning from braking to turning and using all of the tyres grip available at this point is actually very difficult. Now to better explain this, we have a diagram here called the traction circle. Now the traction circle explains the maximum g-force available in any direction that the car may be, may be traveling in. So here at the top we have 100% of the acceleration force. At the bottom we have up to 100% of the braking force and the turning force across here. 100% of the force left and 100% to the right. Now to make this a little bit easier to understand, let's run through approaching a corner and turning through a corner and what forces are taking place where. So as we approach the corner, say we're approaching at a constant speed with no turning. There's no g-force at this point and we're in the center of the graph. We then get on the brakes and if it's a good driver, we use 100% of the force available for braking. We then turn the car into the corner and at the apex, we're using 100% of the turning force available. We then begin to open up the steering, get on the throttle, and finally when the car's in a straight line, we're using 100% of the force available to accelerate the car out of the corner. Now, what you may notice on this diagram is that at this point here, when we're beginning or we're turning the car into the, into the corner, we're, we're halfway between the turning point and the apex point just here, impossible to use 100% of the braking force and 100% of the turning force as you can see here we're maybe at 60 or 70% of the braking force and 70% uh, of the turning force now the reason for this is when you're braking in a straight line all of that grip can be used for deceleration as soon as you ask for a little bit of turning from the car we need to take away some of the, the grip from the braking in order to turn the car. So in that case, that means that you need to reduce the load on deceleration and give some of the grip to, to turning. So for example, we're braking in a straight line, we're using 100% of the braking force available. Then we begin to turn into the corner and we need to reduce our load on the, the braking traction, maybe down to 90 so that we can turn into the corner and use 10% of that grip to turn the car. As we're bringing the car into the apex and we're increasing the steering angle, we're taking more grip away from the braking, so say 70% here, and giving more grip to the steering, so say 30% here, and we're just loading the car into the corner. As we come around and we're coming closer and closer to the apex, then we're we're not using as much grip to decelerate the car and we're using more and more to actually turn the car into the corner. And it's the opposite when you're getting back on the accelerator. So at this point, we're completely turning. We're turning as hard as the car can possibly turn. And then as soon as we start to get on the accelerator, we have to decrease the load laterally on the tire so we can give some of that grip to accelerate the car through the corner and out of the corner. Once the car's out the corner and in a straight line, then we can use 100% of the force available to accelerate the car in a straight line. So if that's a little bit difficult to understand, just take a look at the article below where we go into a bit more detail about the traction circle. Now finally, we're gonna take a look at a pro's use of uh, the grip available versus an amateur's use of the grip available. Now the green line on the traction circle diagram here is the pro's use of the grip. Uh, which we actually just went through here. So you can see we're approaching the corner, then the driver uses 100% of the grip available for, for braking, blends uh, the braking and turning perfectly as they arrive towards the apex. Then at the apex, they're using the tires grip 100% laterally to turn the car, and then blending in the accelerator, opening up the steering angle as they come out the corner before they get on the throttle even more and use 100% of the grip available for acceleration. Now, what you'll see with an amateur driver is that they're not quite approaching the, uh, the ultimate grip available in braking, turning, and acceleration 
But what's even uh, a bigger difference is the blending between the braking and turning and turning and acceleration coming through and out of the corner. So for example, the orange line here is the amateur where they'll get on the brakes and maybe they won't use all of the grip available, maybe only 80% of the grip available under braking. Then they'll come off the brakes and turn the car into the corner. And they won't carry quite as much speed in this phase, this corner entry phase, as a professional might. And so they're not using all of the grip available, which is right out here. Then at the apex, as the car's turning, or should be turning as hard as it can, they'll, they'll get quite close, but they won't use all of the grip available here. And then you can see again that the line dips inside as they're not using all of the grip available for turning and accelerating as they're coming out the corner. Now, this is perfectly fine. It takes many, many years of experience to be manipulating the car in a way that a professional driver does and use all of the grip available at all times through the corner. However, when you're driving on circuit, you should be conscious of which phases of the corner you feel like you're using all of the grip and which phases of the corner you feel that you could push the car a little bit more and try and maximize the usage of grip. So you get your line closer and closer to the professional trace that we can see here where they're using all of the grip available all of the time. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please get in touch and I'll see you next time. Thank you.